In this video, I'd like to talk to you about cranes and what makes them tip over. If you go to see construction sites around wherever it is you live, either buildings or on the roads or things, you'll see a lot of different kinds of cranes. A lot of them are mobile. Some of them are meant to be installed and left during the construction and then removed afterwards, like a tower crane. But they all have something in common. They all lift weights out on the end of a boom. They're trying to reach out and grab something. Another thing all of them have is they've got a big weight on the back end of them, and it's pretty clear why they don't want the crane to tip over. Well, in spite of everybody's best efforts, once in a while, cranes tip over. When they do tip over, it's because somebody either didn't solve a statics problem correctly, or they didn't solve the statics problem at all. So I'm going to make sure today that I give you every chance to make sure that person isn't you. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to look at this crane right here, and they're more complicated than this, but this is pretty much what one looks like, and it's big. It's uh, the body, the, I guess the body part of it, you'd call it, is 8 meters long, and the center of gravity is in the middle, and the boom reaches out 16 meters with a big weight on the end of it. Now, I know this isn't really the scale, but uh, you get the idea here. All right, so I'm um, given all that now, fine. Remember, in GFSA format, the next thing is fine. Well, if what I'm trying to find is W max. What's the maximum weight that this crane can lift without tipping over? All right. So let's, let's think about for a second what that means. What that means is when it starts to tip over, A, that, that foot there lifts off the ground. All right. So let's write out the solution here. That's the next step in GFSA. All right. When you're doing a solution, one of the first things you're going to do is draw a free body diagram. I'm having a hard time imagining how you could solve uh, a meaningful statics problem or strength of materials problem without drawing a free body diagram. If you find yourself trying to solve one without a free body diagram, think again. You might be making a mistake. So what I'm going to do here is draw a I don't know, kind of a notional crane here. I'm going to make it simpler than that. Okay, just so we've got something to work with here. That's good enough. All right. Now let's put some forces on it. Well, the vertical force on the ground on one side is Fa and the vertical force on the other side is FB, and I'm going to call that W, oops, not M, W, upside down M. Um, and I've got the weight of the crane here, Now I'm going to call that W sub C, just to make sure we know that's the weight of the crane and not this out here. All right, so um, let's see, there's the first step. The next step is to write out equations of equilibrium. Well, when this crane starts to tip over, and this foot lifts off the ground, FA is going to go to zero, right? That's the whole point. It lifts off the ground, no more contact, therefore no force. So that goes to zero. When that goes to zero, the crane is just starting to tip, all right? So now there's only two things I don't know. I don't know FB and I don't know W. I do know this one. That's given in the problem. Well, there's two unknowns, so I can write two equations and find both of them. The first equation is sum of the moments in the vertical direction. This is a good time as any to write out our coordinate system. There's x, y, and m. Those are the positive coordinate directions. All right, so I can write some of the forces in the vertical direction has to be zero, and I can write some of the moments equals zero. That'll give me two equations to find out those two unknowns. But do I really care what fb is? I mean, I can find it. Sure, that's not a problem. But what if I had that number? Would I do anything with it? Well, no, I don't care what it is. So let's try to write out the equations of motion, or really just the one equation of motion, such as W is the only thing I find. Well, if you think about it for a second, let's say I sum the moments around uh, B, around point B right there. Well, the, the arm acting on FB is going to be zero, so it won't appear in the equation. So if I look, I'll have one uh, force that does appear in the equation, WC, and another one appears right there. I know that one. I only have one unknown appear in the equation. Well, that's what I want. All right, so I'm going to set that e the, the sum of those moments equal to zero. And let's look at the force acting downward here. That's going to act in the counterclockwise direction. So that's in agreement with my positive sign convention. So that's going to be 4 meters times, I'm just going to yeah, let's put the 500,000 newtons in here, I guess. And then this is, the, the weight here is going to generate a moment in the counterclockwise direction. Since that goes against my sign convention, that's going to be negative. And that's going to be 16 meters. 16 meters times W. Well, 
that's it. One equation, one unknown. Doesn't look too hard. Let's make one small change here. Let's push a few symbols around. Equals 4 meters times 500,000 newtons. Okay, I'll do that. All right. I can cancel a few things out here. I can cancel that out. And remember, you can cancel out units just like you cancel out numbers. So I'm going to cancel that out and that out. And I'm going to have weight equals 500,000 newtons divided by 4. Um, so when I do that, I'm going to get 125,000 newtons. And that's the answer. Okay. Now, to, in GFSA format, the last thing I'm going to do is write out the word answer. And I'm going to write W equals 125000. Always put the units on, draw a box around it. Okay, so there you go. Now, one thing to think about. If I want the crane to be able to lift more without tipping over, what could I do? Well, there's two things I can think of off the top of my head. Make the boom shorter. All right, some booms can extend and retract, so that might be a good way to do it. The other way to do it is put a bigger counterweight on the back. Now, let's say that the counterweight would go out there. Maybe the counterweight, let's say it would be four and a half meters from the uh, center of gravity here. If I were to put an extra, say, I don't know, uh, 10,000 kilograms, all right, of uh, counterweight on the back, that 98,100 newtons, okay, what would I get? What, what would be the, the, the extra weight I could carry? Why don't you figure that out on your own? And a little bit of a ho homework assignment here. Um, take a look at crane counterweights next time you get a chance. Next time you, you're around one, just take a look at all that metal stuff to the back of it. All right? Sometimes those weights are huge. Sometimes those weights are so big that you kind of wonder how the crane is standing up. Well, there's your homework assignment and also a chance to, to remind yourself that statics is real. All right? It happens in the world around you and we use it all the time. I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.